All right, so I'm working on this injection pump, and I worked ahead a little bit to get all the boring bullshit out of the way. Um, so, you kid don't really got to do this in any sort of order, but the first thing I did was you pull the inspection cover off the side of the pump, which is this guy here, and you'll have this, they call it a control unit, that slides in here and is held on to this is part of the governor it's held onto there with a little hairpin clip you pull all that apart you pull this out and then that allows you grab a flashlight to see the drive gear on the pump and I need more damn hands here Video might be a little shaky. I'm doing the best I can. There is this little timing pointer cast into the pump body. And then if you can see it, that tooth just to the right of center there has a punch mark in it. That's where that tooth is supposed to be, which lines up with a mark on the flywheel that's marked FP, which means firing point. So that times the pump. And then you got to pull all your injection lines off. Which are these guys here. You pull off the last return line off the injectors. Which goes from here to here. You un unhook the return line that goes from the pump to the fuel tank. And then there's four bolts. Or four, sorry, four nuts that go on these studs which are these guys and then these sleeves which go over the studs and clamp down on the hydraulic head and if you've got an earlier pump off of a fleet line the hydraulic head's going to be square and it doesn't have these sleeves other than that that's the only difference so you do all that and then you should oh and there's a plug that goes in this hole that's got to come out, which is this guy here, which is used to direct uh, lube oil into the head drive. <clears throat> but you do all that, and then according to the book, you just lift this guy out, which this is the first time I've ever done this, so we'll find out. This is where two hands would be really nice. Oh, it's coming. As long as nothing comes springing my thing out at me, we'll be good. Alright, I gotta get two hands. And just like that, you got your hydraulic head off the pump. Which is the really sweet thing about these Bosch injection pumps. Everything under that is all lube with crankcase oil. And there is nothing physically connecting, if you want to call it that, the injection pump from the pump drive. So you can work on the injection head without actually having to pull the pump off the motor. Which is great. And these things, despite the fact that they're expensive to work on... These are actually incredibly simple injection pumps to work on. They just were big and awkward and clunky and a Rusa Master or a Cav or any of those smaller pumps or the Bosch, the American Bosch inline that replaced this are better pumps. They just, it's, it's a simple bulletproof pump, but there were better ways to do it. That's why they only built these things until the late 50s early 60s but they're incredibly simple pumps to work on um can't remember where the i'll have to find it later maybe but there's there's a there's a parts breakdown in the book and there's there's nothing in there and the governor housing is in here and then this is for all intents and purposes a crankcase where your cam and everything is that runs the plunger i mean there's nothing in there so 
but there's an o-ring here and an o-ring here and some other stuff in there that we got to work on so that's the next well, part here's all the parts like i say there ain't shit in this pump that's the main plunger that's the timing gear timing gear cover this is the little fuel delivery plunger which sits inside there and then that whole thing sits in there that's the retainer for it that's the plug and the return spring for it and then the plunger is held in by basically the same sort of top hat retainer and uh, keepers as like a valve and, a head and an engine head so it's kind of tiny but luckily I was able to get our valve spring compressor to clamp tight enough to catch that top hat and then you got two o-rings copper washer there copper washer there there's an o-ring on the control assembly that's basically it for the seals on this thing this is the fuel metering sleeve that you got to make sure isn't stuck which after taking this apart i can see why one of the things about this pump if you got a tractor that's been sitting for a while is to make sure that sleeve isn't stuck well now i can see why guys are kind of leery about starting these things after they've been sitting because the the fuel delivery plunger was it wasn't stuck but it was stiff so it's gonna it, it's a good thing i tore this apart because she needed to be cleaned up anyhow it's kind of scuzzy but uh i got a buddy with a sauna cleaner sonic parts cleaner that i'm probably gonna take all this throw all this stuff in a box and take over there and throw it all in that cleaner for an hour that's what i did for the injectors and they came out looking minty so do that and throw it back together well here's everything after going through my buddy sonic cleaner those i gotta get me one of them those things are badass that was only i don't know about an hour and 15 minutes and it took well it stripped most of the paint off took all the grease off and this stuff's i didn't have to scrub on it at all it was spot if this is this stuff spotless which is a good sign because it also means it also kind of confirms that this tractor doesn't have a whole lot of runtime on it the main plunger's got a little bit of scuffing in it but it ran good before this so i don't think there's any reason it's going to run worse after this at least i'm pretty sure so you don't want to get too carried away with a wire brush or scotch bright or anything because you can't scratch this stuff because it's all this plunger and this head are machined together so you can't replace this without replacing this because they are custom fit to each other and this plunger can't be replaced without the sleeve because same deal this and this are custom machined to each other they're sold to, they would have been sold together anymore you can't get any of these parts for this pump you can get seals that's it and this is what normally breaks in them if they freeze up. And if you break that, you got to have one custom machined and that gets expensive. But I'm kind of glad that this had to happen because when I got it all apart, this little plunger was actually partially stuck in that in this sleeve. And it wasn't really moving up and down. And I'm wondering if that's why this thing had a slight, it had a pop in the exhaust at mid and high, mid and high RPM. I'm betting that's why it, why it was doing that. I bet it would, every once in a while it was missing a shot of fuel. Because at low RPM, this this is the return spring for it. And I bet at low RPM it was moving slow enough the spring had enough ass to push it back down. But I bet at high RPM that spring didn't have enough ass to keep up. So, I'm going to get set up here and we'll put her back together real quick. All right, I slap this thing back together real quick. It don't take much. Um, the book actually says to use clean diesel fuel for most of the assembly lubricant on this, but uh, I'm going to use some 30 weight motor oil because it gives you a, bit, a little bit better lubrication property and an injection pump doesn't really care about motor oil. It'll push it through just like a diesel. And... Uh, new diesel fuel since they took all the sulfur out to kind of shit anyway as far as lubrication properties which is why you should be running a fuel additive if you're 
running a tractor that still got an injection pump. But uh, if you follow the instructions, they want the injector line fittings in first. So we're just going to do that. And it's kind of impressive. They want these suckers torqued up to 70 foot pounds, which I guess for the size of the thread isn't all that much, but it just seems like a lot on an injection pump. And you've actually got to make a tool to get this out and because it's a slight press fit it ain't hard but it's slight and the thread measures weird I actually just measured it because I was gonna tell you and now I can't remember what it measured I th 15 30 seconds I think it wasn't quite half but it's not quite metric either so I honestly can't tell you what the thread is on that but a half 20 will get a hold of it enough to pull it out because that's what I made the puller so actually before I put that in I'm gonna check something real quick all right I just wanted to make sure it didn't come that seal kit I got didn't come with that crush washer because that's a replaceable part I want to make sure that thing's going to go where it needs to go. Can't quite tell if it fell in. I think there it went. Maybe. Can't quite tell if it's fallen into its seat or not. And this holds that in. Come on. Start. There's a torque value for this too. But for right now. Oh yeah, she's pressing in. And the torque value on that is... ...32 foot-pounds. That's not really a whole lot for a crush washer. it that's what they want and then you got this little spring that sits on top of that plunger and it's got a pin in the cap that receives it then there's a crush washer on the cap too, but that also did not come in the kit. Like I say, pump or parts for these pumps are hard to come by. It's not like you can get a regular crush washer either, because this one and that one are tapered, so it's not even a regular copper crush washer. They got a fucking torque value for that one too. I apologize, I should have had all my shit around, but I didn't have to keep walking back and forth like this. I want 50 foot-pounds on that. I might edit this out, I might not. Ed Editing's a lot of work. 
That's not a whole lot. That's really all they want. That is not all they want. I read the wrong number. That makes more sense. There we go. Matt's got the top end of the pump assembled. And you flip her upside down. A little bit of oil there. And there's a thrust washer. It goes right there. Alright, I just wanted to make sure it's going in the right way, although, honestly, looking at it, I guess it's machined slightly different, but for all intents and purposes, there's really no difference in any of the machine sides, so I don't know why they have a way it has, it has to go, other than this slot's got to face the front of the pump, because that's what your uh, control assembly engages and moves the, that up and down, and that controls your fuel. That's got to go in with this little drill point facing the bottom of the pump. And the tag on the front is where the slot's got to face. That goes in like that. It's going to be kind of fun to get the plunger to line up. And take the plunger and we're going to oil that good. There's no hardly any marks on this plunger which kind of confirms that or it doesn't necessarily confirm but it supports the theory that this is actually a fairly low hour tractor oh well that was way easier than I thought it'd be and you can hear when that hits I don't know if you can hear it on the camera. There's a little burst of air coming out of that port right there. So, I mean, it's tight enough that it can push air. So if it can push air, it can push fuel. install the drive gear so we put a little bit more oil on here and a little oil in there and the gear goes on like that I lied I thought that was wrong you gotta put this is the driver this is the retainer that engages the gear that drives the plunger and that's got to go on first I thought that was odd so that goes on there, and then the gear goes on. Like that. And then you put this retainer plate on, which holds everything on down here. And there's a dimple right there that engages a dimple right here. And you put that on there, and that just snaps together. And then the fun part is getting, you got this spring and then that valve spring retainer, which I'm going to put on, not in the vise. So I'll get that done real quick. And just like that, you rebuilt yourself a hydraulic head off of an American Bosch injection pump. And all you got to do when you put it back in the tractor is make sure... Your timing mark here lines up with where it needs to be in there. And wham, bam, thank you, Sam. That's pretty much it, unless you want to pull the pump off and go through the governor and stuff. But 
it'll happen eventually but right now everything works in there it was just leaking freight fuel into the crankcase which the reason why is because the o-rings that were in it are now flat and the ones that are going on it are round so that would be why it was dumping fuel so i'm gonna throw this thing back in and get the lines and everything put back on and we'll see if i can get it to start well i uh got it all back together I think I got the lines bled. I left them cracked at the injectors and cranked it, and I got fuel with all the lines, so we'll see if she's going to pop off. Well, I didn't have fuel at all the lines. I had fuel at three, so I just tightened all four up because I figured it'd pick the fourth one up if there was fuel at three, so probably doesn't need it, but we'll run the manifold heater just in case. Well, I know it doesn't need it, but hopefully... She kicks off. Whoops. I can smell diesel. crank it long enough because I shut the camera off, sat back down, hit the button, it cranked over like three times I had white smoke and it fired right up. Go figure. It's a lot more snappy now, that's for damn sure. Well, that makes me feel better. For a split second there, I was worried I fucked the timing up. But she took off and went, so... It runs a lot better. It's got more throttle response, and it winds out higher, too, so... There was some stuff that was sticky in there, but... Get some hours on it, and then the easiest way to tell if it's still been dumping fuel in the crankcase is pull that cover off, and if it's been leaking fuel, there'll be fuel inside the crankcase on the pump, so... Put a couple hours on it don't really work it that hard because there's obviously diesel fuel in the oil but i don't want to dump new oil in it if it's still leaking fuel so put a couple hours on it pop that cover off see if the inside of the pump is clean and if it is drop the oil change it and she's good to go so there's that one